what have you found some of the most robust practices for improving sleep? Like okay. yeah. so maybe the lowest great. hanging fruit too. So, yeah, so like question. things that are lowest hanging fruit and same, things that are more robust. So the most important time of sleep is the sleep that you get at the beginning of the night. Um, there's two, there's really two types of sleep, uh, that are the best at, uh, making you, uh, feel healthy and they are slow wave sleep, which is right at the beginning of the night. In fact, this is the type of sleep that is associated with growth hormone secretion, uh, especially in children. This is if, if there was ever the, uh, the fountain of youth, this would be it. Growth hormone makes you feel younger, makes you look younger. I mean, it's, it's, in fact, we were giving growth hormone injections many years ago until we realized that it can cause problems uh, because of uh, where they were getting it from. But that's another story. But growth hormone and slow wave sleep at the beginning of the night is very, very important. Yeah, REM sleep is toward the end of the night. That's when you dream. And, and that's, that's also a good part of sleep as well. But nothing beats slow wave sleep with these large delta waves, if you, if, if you were to look at this on, a, uh, on a, a, a polysomnography. So the most important time to sleep is really that time before midnight. And uh, there's a lot of research in the last four or five years that has been going into this holy grail of slow wave sleep and what happens at the beginning of night. So with that being said, think about what, what's going on in the United States right now, okay? And over the last 50 years, We've essentially turned night into day, right? If you've ever seen those satellite pictures of what the United States looks like at night, it's lit up on both coasts. And uh, if you look at our area here in, in the Southern California, it's, it's very bright. It's probably one of the brightest in the nation, uh, probably only second to New York and the, the D.C., New York you know, area. But here's what's happening. People are coming home later. They're you know, eating later, staying up later. They got a lot of work to do. And they're, they're, they're putting their faces in front of screens, which is emitting light. Now, what does that light do at that hour? What that light does at that hour in just about everybody is it shifts the circadian rhythm and delays it. So whereas you would feel sleepy normally at, let's say, 9 or 10 o'clock at night, you're now going to start to feel sleepy at 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And so you don't go to bed until later. So you would normally be waking up seven, eight, nine hours later because that's how much sleep you're really supposed to get. But unfortunately, that goes into eight, nine o'clock in the morning. And you're supposed to be already at work at your desk or, you know, now with COVID, you're at home working somewhere. Uh, or because of the fact that there's so much density, you've got to get up at four in the morning, five in the morning to get in your car to do your two hour commute to beat the traffic to get at your desk. And so what we've done essentially over the last 50 years is we have sandwiched the amount of available hours that we have for sleep. And what's cut off, what's been cut off is that first part of the night before 12 o'clock where the best, most restful part of the, of the night is gonna happen. You know, it's been said many times and from people hundreds of years ago, I don't know how they knew this, but over a hundred years ago, they said the most that, that two hours of sleep before midnight is worth more than four hours of sleep after midnight. And, and the science is actually showing that to be true. It's, it's amazing.